Hello again, Piero, and anyone else viewing this. Um, this is a response to your video on uh, Origins. Um, I don't really know how to go down this. Kind of made a mess, but um, I'll just go from top to bottom. You mentioned. Uh, uh, I know this is a really a response. Your video is a response to uh, Dragon Smear's um, question on origins. Um, my response to that was, "Why is it such a hard problem to imagine the the origin?" Um, and I wasn't really familiar with the uh, definition of will, even though I've, I've said, I've used the example of free will many times before, and uh, I honestly don't believe that we truly have free will, um, but uh, I'll get into that more later. Um, it is not, uh, I guess it the definition of will that I got was essentially that it's an intentional action. Um, I don't think the intention starts within us. I think it's a, a response. Um, like the way that you mention um, magnetism. You know, you hold a positive end to a positive end, and they repel. Um, and a negative end to a positive end, and they attract. Um, it's just a reaction. Uh, will is is a reaction to the. Uh, I guess I would say the the state, the present state of a person's mind, and uh, given all the things that they have known and experienced before the moment where they feel that they are making a, a willful decision. Um, that's based on everything that they know, everything that they've experienced, everything that they think will work, everything that they have, uh, have seen to work and essentially not caused harm or, um, or even perhaps not caused enough harm that it would jeopardize their life or say in the case of a, a firefighter um, you know they they weigh the value of their own life to the value of someone else's life and uh, if you have enough firefighters you can count on them to support you if something happens say like uh, you're trapped inside of a burning house while trying to rescue a child um, a whole bunch of beams fall down the ceiling falls down and um, you're buried in, in material that's on fire. Um, you would you take that risk knowing that there are either enough people to save you from that condition or knowing that the fire is not so bad or that things won't occur so quickly that uh, you can't stop it. You know, you can't get out of the situation or, you know, you just kind of, it's a, it's a snap decision. Um, you know, like I imagine the, uh, the World Trade Center. And uh, there were people up at the top. And the firefighters wanted to go in and go up. Um, I think the, a good thing would have been to have had the people that were trapped above where the plane hit. Um, some way of getting safely out. Um, helicopters on the roof of the building would have probably been a good thing. Or, you know, helicopters on nearby buildings, the rooftops, um, in preparation of something like that. Or just to, just to travel. I mean, it, it doesn't seem so bad to, um... You know, if you have two huge buildings, there's a line 
lines properly. Um, and there's no way to get across from one or the other. You can, you know, go down, over, and up, even if they're, say, a mile apart, um, having some kind of transportation mechanism from top to top would have been a good idea. Um, again, way off. Um, so yeah, you, we make choices. We make choices. Um, I believe that's what it, what it is. It's reason. Um, uh, I've been told that logic existed before humans. I guess that's kind of correct. Um, but certainly not before the universe existed. If, if there was a beginning of the universe. Um, although I do see reasons, as far as uh, since life has begun, um, reasons are one of the more important things, far more important than will, uh, as far as what we do, what we choose to do. Um, something works, we do it. Um, even you'll see it in, in children, um, they haven't accumulated a lot of uh, a lot of reasons, so they'll do things that adults have a hard time um, comprehending, a hard time accepting, um, they get upset about them doing things that they disagree with because it doesn't fit into what they think that, like a human should be doing. Um, because in their mind they have this sort of idea built up that uh, we're somehow, I don't know, perhaps not animals, and that we do, we should do things for, for reasons that are learned as opposed to reasons that are inherent, um, that are natural. So, uh, another comment, a response to something that you said, I, uh, I wrote down, will is not a matter of uh, irreducible complexity. Um, when you try to say that, like, uh, magnetism, you know, you have molecules magnetically aligned, um, you can't say that the, the origin, I mean, you can say it, but, you know, I don't feel that will is a matter of something like the polarity of a single molecule, or that it's a small thing. Um, I believe will is a an organization, more um, the the order of the whole system. Um, I wrote down uh, why try to understand will as a force. So again, that kind of goes along with it. Um, will is not. Again, with the irreducible complexity, it's not a thing, you know, on its own. It's a relationship between um, everything, essentially. I mean, we are a very ordered system. I think that's one of the best things about humans is, I mean, from the get-go, our DNA is not very complicated. But it is um, we do we do gain complexity even after birth. Um, neurons create order in just in their growth and the way that they're stimulated. Um, and I think it really comes down to uh, you know, the neural pathways, the strength of them, and um, the neurotransmitters that are available, the chemicals. Um, that we ingest, you know, like uh, carbohydrates and essentially you know, all the neurotransmitters. Um, I don't feel that carbohydrates are a neurotransmitter, but they do help us to uh, create them proteins as well. And uh, yeah, mostly mostly carbohydrates when it comes to, to neurotransmitters. Let's see. Um, yeah, I, I don't feel that it's necessary to understand will as a single thing. Um, 
more of an order of things. Um, I, for some reason, drew a, a pattern of um, various senses. Um, our eyes, sight, nose, smell, mouth for taste, uh, the sense of the passage of time, um, sense of pleasure, which generally comes from, again, neurotransmitters, um, pain, which, um, you know, comes from neurotransmitters again, but, uh, is generated by damage, um, temperature, um, which, you know, pressure, pressure and touch, um, a lot of those associated pain, temperature, pressure, um, and pleasure, temperature and pleasure, also related, um, sense of gravity, um, we have that, we can feel, you know, the, the pressure between us and the ground, or between our, our feet and the ground, you know, or the ass in the chair, or, um, standing upright, which is balance, I, I have that down there, um, in our ears, you know, our ears and the sense of balance, and, and all of these things create a sort of a, a network, a neural network, um, and from that neural network, that's, that's where consciousness arises, the, the complexity of it, the patterns of it, um, you know, and, and the, the relationship between the brain and the body, um, knowing, knowing that, uh, knowing that we're, we're in control of our body, knowing that we have to protect our body, um, in order to live, and knowing that we do want to live, um, you know, and, uh, knowing that we want things, knowing that we need, we need things, and, uh, having to work together with other individual organisms in order to get them, um, knowingly or unknowingly, but, uh, more importantly, the, n the ones that we know of on the, the macroscopic level, um, perhaps not the, the whole, I, w I've always kind of seen the macroscopic as beyond, um, like larger than a single organism, which I guess kind of it is, like sociology, um, you know, um, you could say that the ecosystem is a, a macrosphere, and I know you've mentioned it before, um, so I think being aware of that and what's going on around outside of us, um, I really wish I was in the jungle right now, that would be a good example, but, um, you know, it's, it's much the same way that our internal structure works. Um, there's a relationship between all things, and I think of uh, consciousness or will as arising from the relationship between Between these things, the senses, um, there, the chemicals. Um, now I know that you wanted this to be more of a thought experiment, um, and I don't know if I really want to get into my example of a thought experiment right now. I'll save that one for last. Um, he talked about random numbers towards the end of the video. Um, I don't, I don't really believe in random numbers. As long as you know everything that leads up to something like a car, um, you know, you can go back in time and the evidence is there for the reason that that happened. Um, if a person just goes off the road, you know, chances are it wasn't random. Um, but, you know, if you showed up on the scene of a car crash and you found no evidence that, no reason for the person to have done that, it may have been an internal reason. The person may have, say, wanted to uh, end their life. They may have been in a state of, you know, depression or, or some such situation where they felt like uh, they wanted to do something, and uh, they they wanted to crash their vehicle. Um, uh, you you know you would have to go back, and then and then go back into the mind of the person, not just into the the activity of the vehicle, 
you know, you'd have to go back into the mind of the driver and back into the life of the driver, and you could see certain things building up, um, and kind of leading up to that point where where there was nothing but that decision at that moment that they could have made. There there was essentially no choice because everything that they had learned, everything that they had known, um, every choice that they had ever made, again, in the past based on other um, stimulations and thoughts and experiences had all led up to that. And there was no no choosing not to do it. it. It was what happened at the moment. So I don't believe in choice, not even the random number choice that you, the example that you gave um, comparing uh, a girl in school or something and asking her to choose a random number. Which, uh, like, you know, you gave the example if you knew her favorite number then it wouldn't be so likely, but you just keep, you can keep going with that. You can, you know, expose her to a number on the bus and then later in class ask her to choose a number. And uh, if you've done it right, you could easily persuade them to make that choice. Or, you know, it could have been unintentional. They could have saw it, you know, if you set a number between uh, 1 and 10 and uh, they were on the bus on the way to school and... Uh, some girl in front of her said, you know, I'm eight years old, you know, and that number might have just so slightly stuck into her head that when you said between one and ten, she chose eight, um, perhaps not even consciously, just, you know, as a reaction, because that was the first number that came to her head, and she might not even remember why. We're exposed to enough things that uh, nothing at the present is is really a, a choice. Um, let's see. Will as alignment? No. Will as successful and beneficial patterns sensed? I think I already, I already went into that. No, I don't feel it's like a massive alignment of things. Uh, again, more of an, an organization. Very much more complicated than just magnetism. Um, but I will go into a thought experiment in that area. Um, you, When I started thinking of senses, and you mentioned a uh, person deaf, dumb, and blind, um, I, I started thinking about uh, biomagnetism and uh, magnetoception and electroception. Things like uh, birds that can sense magnetic fields, or sharks that can sense electrical um, fields. Um, yeah, no, we haven't really worked on that. We haven't had a need to. Um, but perhaps, you know, some people have it more than others. And if we could find that in people, we could eventually either breed it in or just manipulate, you know, our genes so that uh, some part of us somewhere um, can sense magnetism um, and uh, you know I, I would not buy anybody claiming to have those senses unless uh, they were properly tested um, under controlled conditions but it would really be interesting to uh, try to find them, or at least look at them in other animals that we assume have them, like uh, in, a, in birds. Um, I think they have, I don't, I don't know, uh, essentially something like, the, like iron filings, you know, in their, in their brains, and they kind of align um, when they're in one of the, uh, I forget what they're called, but essentially magnetic field lines. Um, and when they get into one of them, they just straighten out, and it just feels right, and they know it's right. Um, whether that's the case, I've always kind of thought of it as just put the sun behind you, or put the sun ahead of you. Um, but, 
I don't know. It's probably just more uh, a little bit of magnetism, and, and again with the sharks, the uh, electroception. Or it's, it's just about the same thing. They can sense electric fields um, in muscles when our muscles twitch. Um, it's essentially electricity that's making us move, and the sharks can pick up on that, and they can detect certain types of uh, patterns and uh, they know they're, what they're familiar with um, if the pattern is similar say if their seals are their favorite um, and there's a pattern similar to a, a seal um, they're more likely to go after it than if it was a, uh, a jellyfish or an octopus um, you mentioned something about things becoming features of our environment. I wish I would have watched the video a couple more times. Um, I believe we are features of our environment. I believe that we are. We are the environment. We have the environment contained within us and we are directly in relationship or in a relationship with our environment. We create heat, we warm up the earth, um, we produce carbon dioxide, um, and uh, just everything everything about us we're in a relationship with our environment but not directly in a relationship with other um, beings like ourselves we're not we're more independent and perhaps that's why we've been more successful because we don't rely on each other so much in some ways although in other ways that we do we're, we're very social creatures We enjoy working with each other um, and sharing, you know, in uh, in our oxytocin, you know, moments of uh, trust and love and things. Um, yeah, we don't forget that. I think, I, you know, something something about us, you know, especially when uh, when we're children relationship with our mothers is is very very much based on the, or the oxytocin and uh, when that goes off and the patterns that it creates or the, uh, the pathways that it stimulates and, and uh, promotes um, and then when it comes to uh, like father figures just in general um, you know, it's more adrenaline when uh, dad raises his voice or uh, gives an order or makes a command or or whatever. Um, the look on his face, you get uh, adrenaline. Um, what else? Uh, endorphins. Um, yeah. And uh, there's other, other neurotransmitters involved in that. But they in turn create their own pathways. I mean, there's different locations for different, uh, you know, receptors and uh, transmitters. And uh, if a chemical flows from one to the other, you know, that kind of uh, excites that pathway a little bit more. Um, charges build up in it, and again, the pathways are ionized. And, and they're just stronger. You know, certain memories are stronger than other memories because of uh, our, our chemistry. Um, and uh, then you mentioned that if somebody is deaf, dumb, and blind, um, my question is really what what is dumb? I mean, compared to what? Are you comparing dumb to another human, or are you comparing dumb to a rock of a person stumbling around? Um, I don't really see that that's... You know, I don't, I don't believe, you know, I've ever met a human that I would, I would totally call dumb. I, I don't know exactly what you mean when you say that. Um, less intelligent. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm thinking about it too much, but like, uh, if it's alive, I don't really think it's that dumb. It's just less, uh. I don't know, less effective at something that we value, um, like a sort of pattern 
a sort of um, a sort of uh, procedure uh, behavior. That's the word I'm looking for. Certain behaviors we value some sorts of behaviors over others, and uh, people that we see as more intelligent um, may um, display those sort of uh, traits or uh, behave in the ways that we see them as more intelligent. So we call them intelligent and people who aren't like that dumb. Uh, but a lot of people that act as a whole, you know, I mean, uh, I see like an organization in some respects, an organization with a leader as uh, a lot of dumb people, um, if they're leaving it up to the leader to determine um, what should be decided for them um, rather than coming up with a system where they can work it out amongst each other kind of like um, capitalism versus socialism um, I think uh, direct democracy would be much more effective than uh, a republic democracy but it takes uh, a lot of people learning the method, the organization, the, um, you know, the practice to get it to work. At least enough people. It has to be seen to work. And uh, I think we're, we're going to start seeing that working. It's, it's, it's happening more and more. Um, but, um, you made a comment, why... Why does that protein go over there and get the thing it's working on? Um, reactions. Um, and again, so it's just uh, actions and reactions. And our brain just is, there's so many, you know, I, I can't remember the number, but so many neurons with uh, so many, what are they called, dendrites or just like branches. You know, going in so many different directions to connect to other neurons, and so it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a pathway. Um, and again, there's a, a charge going through there, and that charge is stimulated by by photons. Um, you know, the electrical charge, the electromagnetism when I make contact. Um, the sound, the vibration, turned into an electric charge. Um, even taste, you know, electric charges in certain areas of the tongue. Um, olfactory. It's, it's all becomes electricity that stimulates certain parts of the brain. And uh, even when it comes to taste, you know, the feeling of uh, satiation. <laughs> I don't know, um, the, uh, you know, your stomach sends signals to your brain as well, saying whether you're hungry or whether you're full, um, uh, you mentioned luck at some point, whether it's just luck, I just got lucky, I, I don't believe in luck, um, I just see it as, a. A more successful organization, a more successful pattern, just order. It's it's an order, and if that order um, benefits the replication, then it's more likely to occur than not. And through that series of more likely than less likely, things that are more likely and more likely, and you know. Uh, the thicker the skin, the less likely you are to be hurt by a bite or a chemical, you know, if, um, and, you know, we have immune systems now, um, we have a lot of, you know, responses to things, um, even our skeletal structure, kind of a response to gravity, um, how strong it is now. And it, everything could be so much better and it will it will get better 
uh, over time. We're not so reliant on um, Darwinian evolution anymore. But once we get into bioengineering, you know, a little more, and like the walls come down and, and uh, you know, we're allowed to play with ourselves, uh, then we'll figure it out. You know, and there's already a lot of people who are experimenting on themselves. I don't, I don't know if that's, uh, you know, illegal or, or what. To some extent, maybe. Um, but if it's, you know, then it becomes a, a thing of a reason. You know, what's the reason? You know, is it, is it a logical thing to do? Um, you know sticking a, a wire, you know, in in your eye and electrically charging it <coughs> to try to understand the relationship between electricity and sight and, you know, holding a magnet up to your brain, moving it around, um, you know, exposing yourself to, yourself to electricity, um, you know, or stimulating your brain in different areas, um, you know, nobody can stop you if that's what you want to do. Um, so I, I don't see a reason why not do it. Um, when it comes to the well-being of others, like, um, say, mixing two chemicals, in, or maybe not chemicals, but two different uh, bacteria or something and uh, testing it either on yourself or even just in a lab, and uh, if those bacteria may become contagions and uh, cause harm, you know, or lead to uh, uh, some sort of alteration of life that uh, that the masses found uh, unacceptable. And it may be challenging. Um, challenging. It, it may not be good. But... That's, that's really an area of morals and whatnot. So, uh, my thought experiment, um, you said fire and magnetism, well, magnetism mostly, and then fire, and fire is more of a potential waiting to go off, and magnetism is more of a, um, a thing that exists that builds up, you know, this one builds up with this one, and that, and that's definitely more along the lines of what it is. Um, I wrote down a couple things, uh, motion, you know, motion, you push something, it gets pushed, you know, you think of Newton, um, you push enough things, you know, um, line up enough things, put uh, marbles, fill up a, a garden hose with marbles, put one marble in the end and out of the other end comes a marble. If that's where you want the marbles to be, that's great, because then you can curve the hose wherever you want it. And you can put marble, you just pop one marble in there, and you can put marbles wherever you want. Um, instead of transferring the marbles, um, you know, you save time. If you can, you can just maneuver the hose as a whole, and if you could control it, you know, much like a, like an arm, and you could just drop it. It may be more, you know, more, um, save more energy than actually picking up a marble and carrying it over there, carrying it over there. Um, I don't know, maybe if there wasn't gravity and resistance and things. Um, kinetic energy, much the same, and flow, um, flow, I guess, like water, um, and gravity, and tides, you know, the, the waves in the ocean, um, you got a wave that builds up here, and then it creates sort of pressure, and that pressure, you know, and it just builds up, and eventually you get you get waves that propagate um, across an ocean um, like a if that's what you want you create a flow that goes out um, not none of these are really great examples of consciousness arising I'm not doing a very good job of playing the thought experiment that you proposed but um, and my last one was uh, I tried to make it more complicated like uh, I just wrote down gravity, time, and light. Um, I guess if you think along the lines of relativity, the way that uh, the way that gravity 
um, can bend light and the effect that relative motion has on the time that is experienced or perceived um, in relation to the other things. Um, not really sure where I was going with that one. Um, ultimately, I think it boy, I was going to get to um, matter and energy. Um, how, how energy and sort of a I don't really know if it accumulates in a matter, if it can be looked at that. I, I've heard a lot of people say that matter is energy slowed down, condensed. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've played around with relativity or anything, but maybe... And I don't really see that as a very good example. Um, you really have to define energy, and and again, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what energy is, and and I dislike when people, when I hear other people use it, in, in it's like it's such a flexible term. Um, I kind of lump it as everything, you know. Like, I have four basic things, you know, space, volume, distance, length, um, space, time, passage of time, which is somehow related to space through relativity, um, matter, you know, solid matter, macroscopic level, and then energy, um, and I really tried to understand how all of those things are related that's kind of how I, I view most of the the universe. Um, but energy is kind of an odd thing, you know. Um, well, yeah, the way that the energy flows through a system. be a good example and again magnetism electricity much the same thing um, and I do want to mention that you know just about all of our senses are they're so based on electromagnetism they're also similar but we get input in different ways we experience the world in different ways um, just uh Certain things um, are more beneficial to us than others, and so so that's what we've uh, we've learned to take in um, the senses that we we care most about, um, the senses that we kind of uh, prioritize. So, what, 38 minutes, 39 minutes, that's about 5 minutes less than my other video. Um, I'll leave it there. I'm going to try to shorten these up and be more concise and precise um, eventually, but I'm still playing the back and forth, so uh, there you go. Good luck with all that.